In our last video, we took you on a tour of the WordPress dashboard. In this video, we're going to take you on a tour of all of the options on the menu on the left hand side. This will allow you to navigate your own way around the WordPress content management system without feeling you're going to break something by clicking on it. To start with, we're going to click on posts. This brings up all of the latest posts that are on your website. As you can see, we have a post that's been installed with our WordPress installation and it's WordPress resource at SiteGround. From here, you can edit, you can do what's known as a quick edit, you can trash it or you can view it. You can see that I'm the author. It hasn't yet been put in a category. It hasn't been given any tags. It has no comments and it was published 28 minutes ago when we installed WordPress. If you have a lot of posts within here, then you can simply filter by date or you can view by category. And if you wish to edit, you can do a quick edit and you can quick edit a number of posts at any one time. We'll come back to this area when we look at posts in more depth. But for now, our next option is to add a new post. This will bring up a screen where you can add a new post. As you can see, you can enter your title. Your post text and images will go in here. On the right hand side, we have the publish options, the category options and the tag options. We will cover all of this when we go into the adding a post video. For now, if we click on categories, you can see that here we can add a new category simply by adding the category name, the slug, which is the part of the URL that you want to show for the category, whether it has a parent category and a description. Then simply click add new category and you add a new category. You can see here we have a list of the categories. At the moment, we only have uncategorized because we haven't yet added anything. But we'll come back to this when we start going into the actual configuration of the website. You can see that the description that you add will show here, the slug will show here, and the number of posts that are within that category will show here. The next option is tags, very, very similar to categories. Simply add the name of your tag, the slug, the description, and click add new tag, and you'll see here the name of your tag, the description, the slug, and the number of posts that have that tag. Next in the menu is media. As you can see, nothing has yet been uploaded, but once it has been, you will see in here a number of different objects. There'll be anything from PDF files, images, video, and any other attachments that you may wish to add to your website. We'll show you how to upload these when we look at the media library in more depth. By clicking add new, you're given the option to drop files in here, which you can do simply by dragging and you'll see that the box goes blue and you can drop, image, drop images and files directly from your desktop straight into this area, or you can click select files and this will allow you to go in and select the files directly from your computer. Again, we'll look at this in more depth when we look at the media section. Our next option is pages, exactly the same as posts. However, pages are static content that doesn't move, such as your About Us page and your contact page. As you can see, we don't yet have any pages in here. However, when we do have pages, you'll see the title, the author, any comments and the date it was published. Clicking on add new page and you will see you get the option to add your title, then the text of your page and you have your publish options and you can change the order in which it shows. Again, we'll show you this in more detail when we go through the add a new page video. For now, the next option is comments. If you're getting a lot of comments on your website, you might want to install something to 
filter out the spam. As you can see along the top here, we have the ability to view all comments, pending comments, approved comments, spam comments and trashed comments. This allows you to manage the comments that are coming into your website with ease. There will simply be a list of comments here and you'll be able to go through and highlight them or simply unapprove them, reply to them, quickly edit them to take out any links that people may have added, edit them in more depth, add them to spam or trash them straight away. You can see here the post or page in which the comment has been made against. So you can quickly go and have a look at that post if you're unsure of the exact content. For example, if you've written a blog post a year earlier, you might want to have a quick read through before you make a reply to a comment that somebody's made recently. We'll go into comments in a lot more detail during the promotion side of the EvoTank course. The next option is appearance. By clicking on appearance, you can see that we've gone in to the themes option, which is the first option that we have under appearance. World is our active theme. The SiteGround hosting people have installed SiteGround WP23, SiteGround WP63 and SiteGround WP73. WordPress comes with 2014, 2013, 2012 and SiteGround as well have added Universe. You can change your theme very, very easily by just simply clicking Activate. And if we go to our site and we just quickly refresh, you'll see that the whole site has changed its look and feel. We'll take you through themes in more detail in the theme section. The next option is to customize. By clicking on customize, you'll get taken to a screen. Depending on the theme that you have will depend on what you can customize. Each theme is slightly different. However, this will give you a general idea. You can change the site title and the tagline, which we did when we set up the WordPress installation. You can change the colors. So you can change the site title color, which is this one up here. And if we change this and we make it, you can see we can change the different colors and we're getting nice different colors up here. And we'll just put a nice yellow in there because the product that we're promoting is yellow. And we can look at changing the background color, uh, which isn't actually doing a lot there. So we can actually just leave that as default and come out. We can change the header image. As you see here, it says you need to set your image to a particular size. No image has been set. We can set a background image in the same way as we did the header image. You can change the widgets on the different sidebars that are available. Again, we'll be taking you through this in more detail. You can change to a static front page. We don't actually have any pages set up yet. But if we change it to a static front page, we would be given the option to choose which page we wanted and we can change the feature content and the layout so it looks pretty much exactly how we like it. If we click save and publish the changes you then made in here will show up on your website. However, we're not going to do that for now. We're going to click and come out. This will take you back to the themes page. If we click on widgets, you'll see that we have a number of different sidebars and areas that we can add widgets into. This page is very easy to use. It's a drag and drop. And where you have a little drop down, you can click and you can make changes in there. Again, we will take you through this in more detail during the widgets and sidebars video. The next option is menus. Here you can create the menus for your website. You may choose to have numerous different menus and you can simply create a new menu by giving it a name and clicking create menu. This will then make the pages and links and categories for your website available for you to drag and drop so that you can create a menu. Again, we'll be taking you through this in a lot more detail in the menu section.
we were given the option in the theme to change the header. As you can see, this will change this background header here. And we can also choose whether or not to show the header text and change the text color. These options are specific to the theme that we have chosen, which is the 2014 theme, and we're going to leave them as they are for now. We can also click and change the background. So you can see here, we can uh, add an image to it. We can change the background color in the same way that we did with the, the, the header, and then we click Save Changes. I am going to click on editor to show you what's in there, but unless you really know what you're doing, please leave this alone. It is where you have the ability to edit the code for each part of your theme. You can select your theme and then you can select the file and you can edit within here. This saves you having to go on the server to do so. But again, unless you really, really know what you're doing, please leave this alone. You don't actually need to be in here. Under plugins, if we click on plugins, you can see that we have a number of plugins installed. Akismet is a subscription spam filter for WordPress. And I would advise if you are getting a lot of traffic and a lot of spam that it's worth investing in Akismet. However, to start off with, you'll probably find that you're not getting a lot. So don't worry too much. Hello Dolly uh, is the oldest uh, plugin available on WordPress. It's been around since WordPress started and it literally shows lyrics from the song Hello Dolly in the top right hand corner of the screen. We have our Limit Logins Attempts plugin which stops people trying to enter the site more than, more than three times and it will put a block on their IP address. We also have SG Cache Press, which will speed up your website and make the user experience a little bit better. Again, depending on what you've installed will depend on what you see here. Plugins are to change the functionality of the website and we'll be taking you through some of the options that are available to you in later videos. To add a new plugin, simply click on the Add New and you'll be taken through to a screen which gives you some of the most popular plugins. It also gives you the, the ability to upload your own plugin or simply search. This functionality has been greatly improved in the latest version of WordPress and to install a new plugin, once you've found one that you like, you can click Install Plugin and you will get the message saying, do you wish to install this plugin? Click OK and it will go and install it for you. We'll be taking you through recommended plugins and how to manage your plugins in a later video. We also have the plugin editor, which again, as you can see, is code. Please don't glaze over. We're moving on. Uh, again, unless you really, really know what you're doing, please, please, please keep out of this screen. Under users, you can see we have our list of users and we have the ability to go in and edit which we'll take you through in the user video. You can see the different types of user that you have. There is a number of different roles. You have subscribers, contributors, authors, editors, and administrators. In this case, I've been set up as an administrator because I'm the only user and you have to have at least one administrator. We'll take you through managing your users and the user roles in the later videos. You can click add new and this will take you through to add a new user. And in here, you can simply choose the username, email, their first name, last name, website, the password, and repeat the password. You'll need to be above a certain level on the strength indicator. You can send the password to the user via the email address that you set, and you can choose their role in here, which will go through in the user video which will give you a better understanding of what users can do and what role that you need to give them. The next option is your profile. As you can see here you have the ability to cancel the visual editor which I wouldn't advise doing because that's one of the beauties of WordPress. You can choose what you look, your screen will look like so if you're feeling 
a little bit funky and you want to change your coloring then you feel free to do so uh, I prefer mine on the light on the default you have the ability to enable shortcuts from the keyboards to show the toolbar when viewing this is the toolbar this will be available to see via the website if we go into the website you'll see the website has that toolbar available if I turn that off then that will go that will not no longer be available you can't update a username once a username is set that's it you're stuck with it so please think long and hard before you create a user first name last name nickname I am just gonna make a slight adjustment here because I prefer a capital S the email address for the website website and I can add a little bit about me and change my password if I click update profile then with a bit of luck that will change my name so it has a capital S and we can publicly display me with a capital S which looks a lot neater than the small s which is in my username our next option under tools you can see under tools we have press this uh, this is a bookmarklet little app that runs in your browser and lets you grab lots of bits of the web we'll come back to this at a later date and uh, we'll take you through what it does and how you can use it to benefit your um, your WordPress installation categories and tags converters if you want to convert your categories to tags or vice versa then there is a tool here for you to be able to do it we also have the ability to import now you can import your WordPress website from blogger blog roll you can see that we have the categories and tags converter a live journal import movable type an RSS feed import tumblr or just simply another WordPress if you haven't got a website already then you don't need to worry about any of this and you can simply move straight on we also have the export option where you can export your entire website all of the content so that you can move it or you can start doing testing with a new theme or you can start doing testing on uh, a completely new server to see how quickly things will run this will allow you to export all of your content and then import it on a different website under settings you'll see under general settings we have our site title tagline the URL of our WordPress installation the URL of our website these can be different so please be aware of that during our installation we showed you that you can put this in a subdirectory or on a subdomain so that may be different the email address of the administrator membership you can say who can register with the website what they can register as your time zone it's very important this if you're scheduling your posts then you need your time zone to be the local time in this case we're UTC plus one the actual server thinks that it's 1250 it isn't it's 150 so we're going to change this to UTC plus one and that way the time will be correct on the server you can choose how you want your date format to show September 10th 2014 or you can change the date to be whichever format you like or you can change the custom date by rearranging these three to what you wish it to be you can also do the same with the time you can choose which day your week starts on and click save changes and that will save those changes for you the next option is the writing options under your writing settings you have the option to change some formatting you can choose the default post category you can choose the default post format you can see here that we have more about the press it you can change to add posts by email and you can update the services that you alert when you add new content to your website all of this will be covered in the settings video a little bit later on click on reading you'll see that you have the ability to change the reading settings on your blog pages you can see how many posts you'd like so if you'd like five posts to show then you simply change that to five 
within the syndication feed, which is the RSS feed, which is the really simple syndication. You can also change this to five per page or however many you think. 10 is a good number, so we'll leave both of those at 10. You can also say for each article in the feed, what would you like to show? Would you like to show the full text or just a summary of the text? If you have extremely long blog posts, then it's advisable just to show a summary. If you wish to show full text, you can do. Search engine visibility. Discourage search engines from indexing this website. Now it is up to Google, Bing, Yahoo to honor this if you do this, but during the setup of your website, I would advise you to discourage the search engines from indexing the site to stop people finding you before you're actually ready for it. Click Save Changes and you'll see that this has stayed in and we are now trying to block the search engines. Our next option is Discussion. As you can see, there's a number of options in here for your discussion settings. Default article settings is an attempt to notify any blog linked to, to from the article. So if you paste in a link from a particular blog, it will alert that blog by sending out what's known as a pingback. It allows link notifications from other blogs. So this allows if you if somebody links to your blog, then you will get what's known as a pingback or a trackback. And allow people to post comments on new articles. You can override these within the individual article settings. We'll come to that when we work on the posts in a few videos time. Other comment settings, comment authors must first fill out name and email. Users must be registered to log in to comment. Automatically close comments on articles after 14 days. This means that after 14 days, nobody will be allowed to comment. Enable threaded comments five levels deep. This will mean that people can reply to comments. This is a good way to get discussion going on your website. Break comments into pages with 50 top level comments per page and the last page displayed by default. This will show the last 50 comments on your blog. I would leave this alone until you actually have a high amount of traffic coming to your website. Comments should be displayed with the older comments at the top of each page. I would say leave all of those as they are. Email me whenever a post anyone posts a comment. A comment is held for moderation. Before a comment appears, a comment must be manually approved. This is a good way to make sure that your competitors aren't sending you lots and lots of links. Comment authors must have previous have a previously approved comment. This means that if someone has already had an approved comment, they can comment on another article and they will not go into moder moderation. This is entirely up to you. You can automatically hold a comment for moderation if it has two or more links in it. This will stop an awful lot of spam. You can also block particular IP addresses and you can block particular words within comments. So if you wish to add a profanity filter, this is where you would type the words that you don't wish to show. You can add a comment blacklist so particular words, IP addresses or emails will be blocked. An avatar is a picture of your face. If you check out our later video on Gravatar, we'll show you how to set this up. You can also see that you have the ability to turn off avatars completely. You can say what ratings are allowed and you can choose a default logo for the ones that don't have uh, an image already set up to show. We'll take you through these in a later video. Our next option is the media option. You may be asked when setting up your theme to make some changes to these. These are the only times that you would actually come in here and make changes. If you're not asked to do so, I would leave them at the default. When uploading files, organize my uploads into a month and year based folders. This is a great way to keep all of your content well organized and it will keep your website speed as quick as it possibly can be. 
Permalinks are the way that your URL is displayed. Now, the default for WordPress, as you can see here, it doesn't look very flattering. And you have the ability to change this to a day and name, which you can see it puts the date and the post name in there. You can change it to the month and name, so it literally does that. A numeric or post name. But we're going to take you through the reasoning behind this being our favorite in a later video. We've also got our limit logins attempts over here, which we can say we can see anybody that's locked out, the amount of retries that are allowed, the amount of minutes they have to wait, number of lockouts increased to lockout time 24 hours. So if they get locked out four times, they can't come back within a day and try and log in again. This option is completely due to the plugin that has been installed and it is something that we'll have a look at a little bit further down the line as part of WordPress security. We can also see we have the super cacher, which has a number of different options to make your site slightly faster. We'll also be taking you through this because SiteGround is something that we recommend. So we'll be taking you through different options that are available to make your website as fast as it possibly can be. That's your tour of WordPress. We'll be taking you through in more detail each option, what everything does so that you can manage, set up and design your own site.